Zadrizes bus darīs, kas tev. Ok, so we have two major characters, we actually have several, right? But two major characters that everybody's wondering who's going to be cast in these roles. I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is we're going to find out in the next two weeks tops, right? Because both these characters are set to be filming. And all of these uh, leaked images that we were getting from user Unbox HD on Twitter, they're mostly setting up for what's going to be filmed at uh, Caesar's Camp in this massive area uh, where they're going to be filming a good chunk of Rook's Rest and probably battles like the Honey One. In this video, I want to discuss who could potentially be cast as Dayron and who could potentially be cast as Cregan. Please, after you watch this video, if you enjoy my content and anybody you're a fan of here on YouTube, please go ahead and pull the trigger and subscribe. That's the number one best thing you could ever do for anybody you're a fan of here on YouTube. And also, if you really like the video, slap a like on it. Like goal is going to be 420. <laughs> okay, so first up, let's do Dayron the Daring. Because a lot of people, like, when you read Fire and Blood, you realize Dayron is the most innocent character on the greens aside from Helena. Right? Like, the TV show has made certain characters worse than their book counterparts, like, so that I guess the audience hates them more, right? But one of the redeeming characters on the green side is Dayron the Daring. He's literally just doing his job, right? Like, his mother is Alicent, his father is Viserys, his older brother King Aegon II crowned himself, and Dayron is actually not even in King's Landing when this happens. He's in Old Town. Right? He's uh, training to be a knight. Well, rather, he's a squire cupbearer to Lord Ormond Hightower, who's basically uh, Otto's nephew. Right, So, Dayron is sent there, I think, just a few years before the dance starts, in like 125 AC. And he goes uh, to go spend time with his uncle, being his cupbearer and his squire. So, when Viserys actually dies and the war breaks out, that's exactly where he is. He's with his uncle Ormond, right? And then this battle known as the Battle of the Honeywine breaks out, and this is where Dayron gets his title of the Daring. So, basically what happens is, the Greens are so confident that most of the Reach will, uh, you know, bend the knee to Aegon. That's actually not the case. <laughs> uh, some of... The Hightower Bannermen actually declare for Rhaenyra, um, House Tarly, remember Samwell Tarly's from there, but there's a bunch of other minor and major houses that declare for the Black, so what ends up happening is Aegon sends his uh, forces in the Reach, right? Lord Orman, who's his cousin, and his brother, Dayron. So Lord Orman engages in battle at the Honeywine, and it looks like Orman's going to be defeated until Tessarion shows up and then burns all of the enemies that are fighting the Greens. After this battle, this is where Dayron is dubbed a knight, right? Dayron the Daring, not the technically a knight, but he gets the nickname Dayron the Daring, and he's dubbed, uh, he's given this name by Ormond, um, who holds the Valyrian Steel Sword Vigilance. Um, it's kind of interesting because we were told at the beginning of the show that we'd be seeing certain new Valyrian Steel Swords that have never been shown in Game of Thrones, and Vigilance is probably going to be one of them. Now, we don't actually have a confirmed casting for Orman, uh, neither do we for Dayron. But at least for Dayron, we have a few ideas. And here's the thing, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we are kind of guaranteed to get the identity of Ormond and Dayron because Ormond's going to be the leader of the Green's forces in the Reach, right? And when they film the Battle of the Honeywine, they have to because this is going to likely be the introduction to Dayron's character. But, of course... Uh, we'll be able to tell who Day like we'll be able to tell who Ormond is because he'll have ornate armor. He'll be the leader of the army, right? Um, and then oh, he'll probably have a speaking role. Uh, and then Dayron, he's going to be on a dragon. He's going to be surrounded by CGI. Like I'm sure they're going to film him roasting the soldiers indoors, but I'm sure he's also going to be filmed on location. We'll be able to tell it's him because of his costume. Like he will look separate from every single other high tower soldier aside from maybe Ormond because he's a dragon rider. So of course that'll stand out. We may even see his saddle being filmed, which will be awesome to. See. See. Just as a bit of a side note, Dayron uh, started riding to Sarion at the age of six, and um, in the books, he's actually a rival to Jaceris and Luceris. He's actually like just a year younger than uh, Jaceris, so he was born in like 114 AC. So when the war breaks out, he's like 15 or 16. Uh, so that means he's probably going to be played by an actor who is in their uh, either late teens, like 18, 19, or uh, early to mid 20s, right? So two of the Leading candidates, one of them, this dude kind of went viral, is Jack Nuttall. Um, he definitely looks the role, right? For sure, he looks like almost a perfect mix of uh, Sir Otto Hightower, Alicent, and Viserys, right? Uh, he's the right age. I think he's like 21. 
Um, and like I said, he looks the role, but we'll know for sure once they start filming. Another candidate potentially, and I've actually already covered this in a video for, before, is Aaron Hodgetts. Uh, this was from a few months ago. He started following some of the members of the cast. There were rumors that he's probably just going to be an extra, but he definitely looks the role. Let me know between these two actors, Jack Nuttall and Aaron Hodgetts, down below which one you think would play the better day run. I personally think Jack Nuttall just because he looks younger than Aaron Hodgetts, but I think both of them would kill the role if they were uh, given it. I've never seen any of their work, but uh, you know the casting director for House of the Dragon has been so on point. I'm positive that, you know, these characters are going to nail their roles. Um, and then next up, next character I want to talk about is your boy, Cregan Stark. And this is kind of nuts, right? Like, you could argue that uh, it was just as important to announce characters like Alice and Alan of Hall as it is to announce characters like Cregan. Like, for sure, you could say that, oh, they're announcing who's going to be playing Simon freaking Strong, a guy that literally just dies in a duel with Eamon, but they're now not announcing major characters. <laughs> it's frustrating, is what I'm getting at. Like, Cregan Stark, Cregan plays a pretty massive role um, when he's introduced, and then, of course, towards the end of the dance, but you got to realize this show's only a few seasons, so I'm sure Cregan's going to have some scenes in between when... Uh, you know, Jaceris is up there in the north spending time with them, and then he comes down south for the Hour of the Wolf. There has to be, uh, in my opinion, a really good actor to play this role. Uh, Cregan, some of the, or one, rather, of the leading candidates is Lloyd Howells. Now, this dude, for sure, looks a little bit like Bran. He kind of looks like the actor who played Ned Stark. Um, he, or younger Ned Stark, rather. Uh, he also slightly resembles Jon Snow. Uh, I think he would be pretty good in the role. I do think he's a little bit too short, but uh, remember the character is just slightly older than Jaceris. Like he's in his early 20s, so it's going to be a younger actor that's going to be playing him. And I think uh, the problem with a lot of these headshots that we're seeing is from is they're from several years ago. And actors can be like chameleons. If they grow a beard, cut their hair, and die it or something, they could look totally different. So. The images that we had for Lloyd Howells may not necessarily look like, you know, he's uh, battle-hardened Stark ready to come down and wreak vengeance for anybody who was against Rhaenyra, but uh, like I said, you know, actors are chameleons, so he would look totally different on screen in costume. Like, it's mentioned in the books uh, when Jon is about to fight who he thinks is the Lord of Bones, but it's actually Mance Raider. Um, like, he sees Lord of Bones, this is before he finds out it's actually Mance Raider, he sees Lord of Bones put on armor, and he's like, holy crap, this dude's way more formidable than I thought he was, and then John thinks to himself, well, even Samwell Tarly would look formidable in armor, and of course, Samwell would look badass in armor, he would look way bigger and more tough and stronger than he actually is, so that's what I'm getting at for Cregan, this Lloyd Howells dude, just imagine him in the north with the... Ah, with all that badass Stark armor on, like, he would look so cool sitting there, um... If you're aware, uh, the major plot point that happens with Cregan and Jaceris, and I'm just going to summarize it real quick because I mentioned it a bunch in some of my more recent videos, is basically Jaceris, after going to White Harbor and treating with the Manderleys, and then going to the Vale and treating with the Aarons, uh, he goes north. To go full on north. Like After he goes to White Harbor, he goes to House Stark. And he goes to Winterfell. And he treats with Winterfell. Um, and Cregan is kind of not necessarily... Um, friendly to him when he first gets there it's mentioned like that's kind of a headcanon that i have but just think about it a cold northern lord right they don't really want to take part in the affairs of the south so of course when this dude shows up in flamboyant clothing and rocking a dragon and he just lands down like the north are hired men so he's probably gonna not be very well received at first right and it's also mentioned in canon in fire and blood that Virmax has uh snappy it gets kind of irritated because of how cold it is, right? So uh, this interaction that happens there, several things come of it. Supposedly there's a secret pact of ice and fire that happens once Cregan discovers that Jaceris is sleeping with his either bastard daughter or bastard sister, Sarah Snow. Um, and because of this, he forces them to get married. You have the Pact of Ice and Fire. This is why Cregan stays loyal and to the Targaryens, to Rhaenyra, to the Blacks, and goes down south uh, because of that Pact of Ice and Fire. But we will see which route they do on screen. All right, now this is a perfect point to wrap this video up. I didn't want to take up too much of you guys' time. I've dropped a few videos this week that are 15 plus minutes long. And also, if you want some extra, extra content, consider checking out my Patreon. I drop... 30 to one hour long podcast there weekly and there's a content a vast library of content that are like 
40 to 50 videos that have never seen the light of day uh, here on YouTube. So go check that out and join if you want. Uh, super special shout out to the members of my Dragonite tier. They are Tyler Schnabel, The North Must Remember, Destiny Phillips, Pebbles83, and Brianne Johnson. Thank you for watching. Alonat, Zaldrisas, Fustari, Exos Tower.